What's up guys and welcome to the 60 second Xamarin Enter tutorial. So this video is going to be focusing on a child fragment manager. Okay, so it's actually a pretty simple concept, but uh, before this we've been using the fragment manager, the support fragment manager inside of the activity to use like, you know, that's what you, if you remember, that's what you use to actually make transactions that can allow the activity to communicate with its its fragments, okay? So it's what what helps replace fragments or add and show them. So it's the way the activity communicates with the with the fragments inside of it. Now, there is something called a child fragment manager, and what a child fragment manager is, guys, is a is it's, it's if you want to nest fragments, okay? So if you actually want to take a fragment and you want to put a fragment inside of that fragment, okay? So uh, let me uh, kind of further explain that. What I mean by that is like you know, say for instance, well, remember this this uh, project that we have. We have this pull up, right? And if you guys don't remember this, you know, go back a few videos where we concentrated on how to develop this. But we have this pull up, and this is a this is the fourth fragment, okay? Now this fragment right now is actually hosted by the activity, but it's possible that if we want to nest the fragment and have the have frag have this fragment, you know, uh, be this fragment's parent, then we could do that using the child fragment manager, and that way. It gets it gets an instance of the fragment manager for this fragment and this fragment only. All right. So sometimes you want to kind of just you know uh, have it usually when you're you want to probably use that when you're going to be using a a pager adapter where you're going to have multiple fragments and you want each of them to have its their own instance of a fragment manager and have their own fragments inside of that fragment. So uh, that's one one reason why you want to use it. Okay, so I just simply wanted to demonstrate that and, and show you how e easy it is to accomplish that. All right, so we'll, we'll go ahead and stop running this, and we'll come into the fragment three. Okay, this is the one with what that I just showed you with the with the pull up of fragment four. So here, remember, this is where we actually add the fragment right here. We add it here, then we commit the transaction, and this is a key part right here, guys. We're using the activity that so this this property gets you the activity of the fragment okay or the the host activity of this fragment and then it grabs its support fragment manager and then begins the transaction however what we can do if we want this fragment to actually host the the child fragment we can actually use something called the child fragment manager okay and this is the fragment manager that is that is specific to this fragment and this fragment only which is what makes it different because the activity the activities fragment manager is uh, shared throughout all the fragments, okay? And then just like normal, we can do child fragment man manager, and then we can begin the transaction. And then it, like, it will return a either a, a support fragment manager, like right here. It knows this because, um, so the Android support version four app fragment manager, it's using that because this fragment is inheriting from that. Okay, so if it was, in, if it was inheriting from the normal fragment, okay, the one that's going to be used not with a support library, but with, you know, say API 21 and up or something, where you are, or if you don't need the support library, then the child fragment manager will also, will not be that, but it'll, it'll return a, the proper transaction for, for that child fragment manager. Now, one thing to note is that this is only available in two places. This is available in the support library, all right, which we are using now in this project. And it is available inside of the inside of the the applic uh, API 17. So if you want to, if you say if your minimum version is API 15, you're going to have to bump it up to your minimum version of API 17 since the child fragment manager was not introduced until API 17. So either use the support library if you want some more backwards compatibility, or you're going to have to switch to your minimum version of API 17, which I believe is Android 4.2. All right. So just a kind of side note there. But anyway, let's follow through with this. And I'll show you how easy it is. So now we're using now this is the is the fragment manager of this fragment, and this fragment will now host fragment four. All right. So let's go ahead and run this, guys, and see if uh, we get the same results that we had before. All right. So as you can see, we have uh, fragment one. We'll go to fragment three, and then now since this is now fragment three, we're actually going to pull up. And there really is no difference in this case, but it, you'll see how easy it is to now transfer the fragment to host this fragment, okay? So before the activity was hosting this fragment, and now fragment three, this, this guy, is now hosting it. And it is specific to this fragment and this fragment only, okay? 
So that's something that's, that's just to keep in mind, guys, when you are doing these kind of things is that it is possible for fragments to be hosted by other fragments. All right. So that pretty much uh, completes a lot of like the fragments of, you know, the last few videos we've been talking a lot about fragments. Hopefully at this point you are now a little more comfortable with it in, in many different ways. And we, uh, we have gone, you know, demonstrated a lot of ways to, to replace them and add them and to use transactions. And hopefully, like I said, you're a little more comfortable with, with using them. And uh, the next few videos are going to concentrate probably going over like global styles and global integers and global colors and setting themes and, and whatnot. And it's actually something that's really simple, but it's something that I haven't really gone over. So uh, it's something that's really going to be pretty useful for when your application, your project starts to get really large. You want to definitely start being able to, to use some global stuff. Okay. All right. But uh, if you guys do have any questions, of course, please put them below. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.